Welcome to my lecture online. Here's our next set of examples of how to simplify rational expressions. And we're going to use the technique of factoring. And when we look at our first example there, at first sight, you wouldn't think that that is factorable and that we can simplify that. But if you factor out a common factor from the numerator and a common factor from the denominator, something interesting happens. Let's see. So in the numerator, we can factor out a 5. We're left with an x minus 1. In the denominator, we can factor out an 8. And we're again left with an x minus 1. And then you realize, yes, the numerator and the denominator do have a common factor. So we can simplify that. And we're left with 5 divided by 8. On our next example, we're going to have to again factor the numerator and the denominator. That's a little bit more complicated than our first example there. So at least we know that our numerator is going to look like this and our denominator is going to look like this. In other words, it's going to be a product of two binomials. Since we have a 2x squared here, that means we're going to need a 2x and an x and the denominator again a 2x and an x. On the signs, notice that this is positive and this is negative, which means they both must be negative. And now we're looking for two numbers in the numerator that when we multiply we get 3 when we add, well, be careful, when we add the product of the inner terms and the product of the other terms, we get negative 5. Let's see here. If we put the 3 here and the 1 there, let's see what we get. 2x times a negative 1 is negative 2. 3 times negative 3 times x is negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3 adds up to negative 5. Looks like that's the correct combination. For the denominator, we have a negative sign here and a positive sign there, which means one must be negative and one must be positive. And the positive number must be one bigger than the negative number when we add the inner, the product of the inner and the outer terms together. Well, it's a little bit of a, a guesswork here, so let's see what we can do. Uh, let's try 2x and 3. Let's try a uh, plus 3 and a negative 2. Does that work? This gives us uh, plus 6 minus 2, that gives us plus 4, does not give us the right combination. Let's turn them around. Let's put the 3 there and the 2 there. 2x times 2, that gives us 4x. Minus 3 times x gives us negative 3. Plus 4, negative 3 gives us plus 1. And negative 3 times a positive 2 gives us a negative 6. So with a little bit of guesswork, we're able to come up with the right combination. Now that we're done with that, we can realize that 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3 is common for the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel those out. And we're left with an x minus 1 divided by an x plus 2. In our last example, things get a little bit more complicated because the numerical coefficients in front of the x squared terms are a little bit bigger. And so there we may want to use the FOIL method for both the numerator and the denominator. We know that essentially the numerator will look like the product of a binomial, two binomials, and so will the denominator. But what combination? So let's try to use the FOIL method here. On the first one, to get number 10, we have a 5 and a 2, or a 2 and a 5 is the most likely candidates. To get negative 2, we have a negative 2 and a positive 1, or a positive 2 and a negative 1. The product of both of those will give us a negative 2. Now, which combination will give us the negative 1? Well, 5 times 1 gives us 5, and then we add to that a 2 times a negative 2, which is a negative 4, which is positive 1, which is not the right combination. How about if we try the first two numbers with the next two when we reverse the sign? So 5 times a negative 1, so because we go this direction, of course, so 5 times a negative 1 is negative 5, plus a 2 times a 2 gives us 4, which is a negative 1, which is what I want because I have a negative x there, which meant that this combination here gives us the right factors. So we end up with 5x plus 2, and we end up with 2x minus 1. Again, we're going to do the same for the denominator, so let me do it over here so you can see what I'm doing. Again, we need a 6 there. So to get the 6, we have 3 and 2, or 2 and 3 as possible combinations. For the negative 2, we have a negative 2 and a positive 1, or a positive 2 and a negative 1. All right, let's see which combination gives us the middle term. 3 times 1 gives us 3, plus 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4, 
which combined gives us a negative 1, but I need a positive 1, so that's not the right combination. So maybe if I reverse the signs, if I go 3 times negative 1, that's a negative 3, and 2 times a positive 2, that's a plus 4, that gives me a plus 1. That looks like it's the right combination, so again it was 3 times negative 1, and a 2 times 2. So I took the first 2 and the last 2, and that seems to work. So when I then say that 3x plus 2 for my first binomial, and 2x minus 1 for my second binomial. So notice here, uh, let me do a quick check again. I need a positive 1, I had a positive 1, so that was good. Now the common factors are 2x minus 1 and 2x minus 1, so they cancel out. So I'm left with, well, I'm out of room here, so let me go over here. I'm left with a 5x plus 2, and let me put an equal sign there. So we have a 5x plus 2 for the numerator, and we have a 3x plus 2 for the denominator, and that's a simplified form of our third example. So if we get into trouble and the coefficients become a little big, we may want to resort to the FOIL method to get us the right factors, and that is how it's done.